who uh, Josh Allen's backup uh, is now the backup for a guy who threw three interceptions last week in one half of football. Uh, we got Steelers bills. Let's look for the bills defense to pick up where Lamar uh, pick up where uh, they did at last week against Lamar had two interceptions against him and they'll be jumping some routes on this rookie. Uh, we got under over under a 47 on this windy day in Buffalo. Absolutely. So guys, the Steelers are getting worked by wide receivers and running backs. So I think Gabe Davis is a bounce back week this week. I know the last two weeks have not been great, but I am starting him with confidence in this one, especially if Minka misses, which it looks like he's going to. Uh, Devin Singletary got most of the work last week, so hopefully that continues. I'm still really nervous about the Bills backfield in general because <laughs> they seem to just do a carousel of guys. Uh, but um, yeah, I really like uh, most of the Bills players in this one. I would consider sitting Knox. He hasn't really done much, and the Steelers are 14th against the tight ends. So, yeah, that's where I'm at on the Bills. Where are you yeah. at on the Bills? Uh, the Bills, I feel great about. The Steelers, yeah. I do not feel great about. Um, I'll get. Let's get back into the Bills here in a second. I just want to get into the Steelers for a second. They replaced Trubisky, who was playing terrible, for another quarterback who played even worse in the third in the second half of football last week, and now he's the starter. I, I don't think that's the right move. I think that they need to develop these this rookie a little bit more. I know Trubisky hasn't played great, but like Pickett looked worse. Like right, like I mean, yeah. I, they they say that oh the interceptions weren't his fault. He threw the ball. I mean, one tip ball is one thing, but if you get another one, it's it's on you. I mean, I, I just don't understand why people are excited about this. I like to see rookies sit behind, especially rookie quarterbacks who are relatively underdeveloped, sit behind someone for a little while to kind of learn the NFL a little bit more. And this is exactly kind of what happened to Fields last year. And I'm not trying to like throw any wa water or oil on the fire over here, but. I just see this. I just see this as a bad move and everyone's excited about it. And I don't get it. Like I, everyone hates Trubisky, but I, I get that. I yeah, understand he's not. Played it's well. definitely the Trubisky hate in general. Um, he's not exciting to watch. I, you, again, I think you can win with Trubisky, um, which they've shown, but he's not exciting to watch. He's going to make mistakes. So, you know, I think getting Pickett in there was one way to shut up the media, <laughs> if you will. Uh, but honestly, give me all of the pickings with Pickett in there. He is my awesome possum wide receiver of the week. His route tree was greatly expanded last week, and he led all the wide receivers in target targets when Kenny Pickett got into the game there. So the Bills DBs are a little bit beat up right now, so we should get some really solid work in this one. I Claypool, oof, get him on your bench, man. If you're starting Claypool, you're in some real trouble. I am a little bit concerned about Deontay. Trubisky really locked in on Deontay. So it's going to be interesting to see what, how that chemistry works out with Pickett. Um, and then I think Pickett should be able to help Friar Muth more than uh, Trubisky was. So I'm excited about Pickens and Muth, really. I was going to say, Friar Muth was actually pretty consistent, one of the more consistent tight ends in the league. I mean, he wasn't like scoring a ridiculous amount of points, but um, I think he was doing just fine as it is. I think you, you keep him in there, obviously. Uh, and like you said, I mean, you've rolled Deontay Johnson out there. You can't sit him right now. I mean, you got to hope that that was, him. but Claypool, I think you can drop him personally. I'm, I'm done with him. Uh, I mean, obviously there's a new quarterback coming to town. So like, let's see what happens, but he didn't, I, I just, he has looked terrible this year. So I'm hoping yeah. that this opens something up for Najee. I'm hoping this is the one silver lining in this, because I feel like not only are they not using Najee in the past game, but they're barely using him in the run game. So yeah. Um, I just want to see more for Najee. I feel like that's the way to kind of get a rookie quarterback up and running, uh, much less Trubisky, but they just decided to not use him. And I mean, he looked relatively ineffective, but it's pretty easy when you know that it's a run play. So be a little bit more, uh, less one dimensional, I should say. Um, but back to Buffalo. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually out on Gabe Davis as well. I think, that this, I think this was just one of those things that everyone got hyped about because Gabe Davis was so great in college. And then everyone was like, oh, well, he's Josh Allen needs another person to throw to. Josh Allen's fine. He, he's going to he's going to throw to Stephon Diggs. He's going to throw to Singletary. And then he's going to look everywhere else. And it seems to be that's the thing. Dawson Knox isn't even getting work this year. I just don't see like them making Gabe Davis a thing and then Dawson Knox a thing and everyone else. I think that people just I think someone said Gabe Davis was going to be good and everyone just believed him. And then and, I, and it's, it's nothing against Gabe Davis skill. He just doesn't get the targets, and I don't. I just don't see it happening because Josh Allen throws a lot, but yeah, he also runs a lot. They also throw dump offs a lot. There's also Dawson Knox. They got to get involved. Isaiah McKenzie's there. I'm thinking Stephon Diggs, Singletary, 
maybe Knox if you're desperate. Obviously, Josh Allen is pretty much now the starter. The McKenzie level. thing is really interesting to me because we saw Jamison Crowder break his ankle. He's out for a long time. Um, is McKenzie a guy you're throwing in the flex yet? Or is that... I, I feel like he's done well. I think it's kind of like a Greg Dortch thing, which unfortunately Greg Dortch is like gone now. But like you you you, you saw Greg Dortch week one, you're like, yeah, okay. You saw him the second week, you're like, yeah, whatever. And then the week three is and four is you're like, okay, maybe I'll start thinking about playing him. And then he's gone. So it's like, obviously they had people coming back from injury. So it's kind of a situation where I want to see Isaiah McKenzie grow a little bit and be that number two officially before I throw him in there. But I'm, I'm game for it. If you're desperate, we haven't hit bye weeks yet. So you should be fine still. But if you hit uh, the injury bug and you need to throw Isaiah McKenzie in there and you use streaming option, I'm down. Yeah, I mean McKenzie, he's out there. He's playing about fifty percent of the snaps. We've seen him score in three of his three of the four games this year, and he's not getting. He had one game with pretty good yardage, but uh, kind of an interesting guy to keep in your back pocket there, especially in a deeper league. Yeah, and I'm also down to play Gabe Davis. I just think that, like in my eyes, people had him just on this pedestal, and he's just not reached that at all at this point. Yeah. This is a great game for him to bounce back against the Steelers. I mean, especially with Minka if he's out. Um, so. I love the talent that Gabe Davis has. He played 98% of the snaps last week, so the injury should be completely healed by now. So if he keeps playing those type of stat or snaps, especially on that offense, uh, I think we could see a pretty strong you know, end of the season for him on this one. Yeah, so this one's pretty obvious, right? The Bills win? Oh, yeah. Bills, okay. 100%. Cool.